Let's say you are given 8 blue atoms and 8 green atoms. Additionally, you are given 16 places or spots on which you can arrange these atoms. Now these 16 spots are divided into two groups of 8 places. On the left hand side of the divide you have the left hand side and on the right you have the right hand side. Now given a constraint, for instance that on the left hand side you need to have 6 blue atoms and 2 green atoms and then consequently on the right hand side you need the opposite, you need 2 blue atoms and 6 green atoms, in how many possible ways can you arrange the atoms such that this constraint is fulfilled? And this is of course a classic combinatorics exercise. In fact, this entire video is an addendum to the video I just uploaded on my other channel, where we discover where the arrow of time comes from. Where in that video we cover the intuitive explanation with some nice visuals, in this video we actually do the calculations. But of course this exercise can just as well be seen as the third video in my series on combinatorics. So let's dive right into it. The first and simplest case is a scenario where the colors are completely separated. This means that our constraint is that on the left hand side we have 8 blue atoms and 0 green atoms. And then consequently on the right hand side we of course have 0 blue atoms and 8 green atoms. So in how many possible ways can we arrange our atoms such that this constraint is fulfilled. Now here what's important to understand is that colors of an equal color are identical. This means for instance that if we swap two green atoms then this doesn't change anything. The same goes for swapping two blue atoms. This also doesn't change anything. Swapping atoms of an equal color does not change the specific arrangement. Therefore in this specific case there is just one arrangement of atoms that fulfills the boundary condition, namely that they are completely separated. And to use the words that I use in my other video, this means that this macro state or this condition only has one micro state or one arrangement of atoms. Let's then go to the next case and leave this trivial scenario behind us. Let's introduce some mixture. Let's say for instance that here only one atom of a different color is on each side of the divide. For instance, let's say that these two atoms swap around, meaning that we have one blue atom on the right and one green atom on the left. This can be translated in our new constraint that on the left we have seven blue atoms and only one green atom. And then consequently on the right we have the reverse, one blue atom and seven green atoms. And then again the question becomes, in how many different arrangements or in how many different ways can we arrange these atoms such that this condition is met? And to find out, let's look at each side of our divide separately and then later combine them again. So first we look at the left hand side of our divide. Here we have 7 blue atoms and 1 green atom. And let's think of this situation as having 8 different positions on which we can put our atoms, having 7 blue atoms and 1 green atom. So having 1 green atom we of course have 8 different choices. We can put it on the first place, on the second place, on the third place and so on and so on. This means that our 1 green atom can be at 8 different positions. And of course the rest of the positions is taken up by blue atoms. And since swapping blue atoms doesn't matter, on the left hand side we have 8 different arrangements of atoms that give us 7 blue atoms and 1 green atom on the left hand side. Of course the exact same can be done on the right hand side. Here however the situation is reversed. We have 1 blue atom and 7 green atoms. However just changing these colors doesn't change the situation. We can still think of it as just filling up spots with the colored atoms that we have. In this case we have one blue atom which can of course again be at eight different places. The first, the second, the third and so on. And then the remaining green atoms of course have to fill up all of the other spaces. And these don't add to any other arrangement since of course changing any green atoms with each other doesn't change the arrangement. So also here we have exactly 8 different ways on the right hand side 
to arrange the 7 green and 1 blue atom. And at this point we have to bring these two together. And to do so, we have to look at the combined system of left and right hand side. Concretely, what this means is that we multiply the number of different arrangements on the left hand side with the number of different arrangements on the right hand side. And you can see why this is quite easily. For each position that the green atom takes on the left hand side, the blue atom on the right hand side can have its eight different positions on the grid. And therefore, for each position on the left hand side, we have eight different arrangements that come from rearranging the atoms on the right hand side. And this can be done for the eight different positions the green atom can take on the left hand side. That's why we have to multiply these together. Eight arrangements on the left hand side times eight arrangements on the right hand side. And since eight times eight is 64, in this scenario where we have just one odd colored atom on each side, we have 64 arrangements that satisfy this condition or 64 microstates for this slightly mixed macrostate. But up until now, we just counted the number of microstates or possible arrangements because there simply weren't that many. But what if we now take it to the next level? And this is where it really gets interesting. What if we say that there are now two odd colored atoms on each side of the divide? The number of ways you can arrange these atoms is just too large to count them manually. So we have to be smart about it and this will be the first step in building our formula. For instance, let's say that also this atom and this atom are swapped out. So we have here one extra blue atom and here we have one extra green atom. So our constraint becomes on the left hand side we now have six blue atoms and two green atoms and on the right hand side we have the reverse. We have two blue atoms and six green atoms. And again, the question is, in how many different ways can we arrange our atoms such that this constraint is still valid? And to tackle this more complex problem, we're going to double down on this view of choosing places for the atoms that we have and then arrange them over these places. And it will be in this way that we'll be able to find a pattern. Concretely, this means the following. On the left hand side, we have eight different spots on which we have to arrange two green atoms and six blue atoms. So let's start with the two green atoms and find them a spot. So we're going to count the number of possible choices we have to finding a spot for each of these two atoms. For the first green atom, we have of course eight different positions because none of them are already taken. Let's say for instance that for the first atom we choose this position, but we could have easily chosen any other of them. The most important part is that we just had eight choices for this specific green atom. For the next green atom, we only have seven spots left to choose from, because one of them, namely this one, is already occupied and we cannot put two atoms on the same spot. So we only have seven spots left. So we multiply eight times seven. And for instance, let's take this spot for the next green atom. Therefore, the number of possible choices we had to place these two green atoms on our eight different spots is eight times seven. But we have to remember that changing two atoms of an equal color doesn't change the arrangement. These two green atoms are completely identical. Therefore, if we swap them around, it doesn't change the arrangement. So our number of choices is actually divided by two which is technically the number of permutations of two green atoms, which is two factorial, but that's just two, but we will generalize this later on. Just remember that this division factor comes from the fact that green atoms are identical and so are blue atoms, and therefore we can swap them around without doing anything. And now we've run out of green atoms and we still have the six blue atoms to find a place for. Of course, now we know how this goes. For the first blue atom, we still have six choices left because two are already occupied by two green atoms. Let's take this one for instance. And we note down that we had six choices for this blue atom. For the next blue atom, we have five choices left. Let's take for instance this one and so on and so on. For the next blue atom, we have four choices left, then three choices, two choices. And for the last atom, if we just fill in all of these spots but one, we see that for the sixth blue atom, we only have one spot left, so not any choice at all. 
So we simply multiply by one and we fill up our entire row of spots. But again, here we have to take into account that swapping two blue atoms doesn't change the arrangement. So we don't want to count it as two different arrangements when we swap two atoms. And the number of ways in which we can swap these blue atoms around is the number of ways of arrangements of these blue atoms. And we know that this is simply six factorial. So we divide by six factorial. So now we've calculated the number of choices we had to place these two green atoms on our grid. And we calculated the number of choices we had to place our blue atoms on this grid. And to combine in, we have to, again, multiply these two. Thus, we get 8 times 7 divided by 2 factorial, I will just put here. And we multiply this with what we found for the blue atoms, which is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 6 factorial. Now in the numerator, we see that we just have 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 all the way to 1. And this simply is 8 factorial. And the denominator, we see that we simply have 2 factorial times 6 factorial. And the form of this solution already shows a hint of the general formula for calculating permutations. We see that in the enumerator, we have 8 factorial, and 8 is the number of spots we had available. And in the denominator, we have 2 factorial, 2 being the number of green atoms, and 6 factorial, 6 being the number of blue atoms. So this pattern is already clear and we will use it later on. But first, of course, before we forget, let's do the right hand side where we have the opposite colors. Here the constraint is that we have 2 blue atoms and 6 green atoms, so exactly the opposite of the left hand side. And of course, swapping colors doesn't change the mathematics at all. So we can just go through the same procedure, albeit a bit more quickly now, because we're getting familiar with it. So we have eight possible spots, and we have to choose the place for the two blue atoms. For the first blue atom, we have of course eight possibilities, because none of the spots are already taken. For the second blue atom, only one spot is already taken, so we have seven possibilities left. Because swapping two blue atoms doesn't change the arrangement, we wouldn't want to count this scenario. Therefore, we divide it by two. Then, of course, we have six spots left and six green atoms left. For the first green atom, we have six possibilities, then five, then four, then three, then two, and then one. Of course, each green atom is completely identical, and swapping these six around doesn't change anything and there are six factorial possible ways in which we can swap these six green atoms around. Then again, we combine the number of choices for the blue and the green atoms, and we get the following. 8 times 7 divided by 2, multiplied by 6 times 5 all the way to 1, and we divide this by 6 factorial. And again, because mathematics doesn't have any color, we get 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 6 factorial. And we have the number of possible arrangements for the right hand side. Of course, as before, we want to multiply the number of combinations from the left hand side with the number of combinations on the right hand side, and thus we get the following. On the left hand side, we had 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial because we had two green atoms and 6 factorial because we had 6 blue atoms. And now we multiply this with 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial coming from the 2 blue atoms and 6 factorial coming from the 6 green atoms. And now we see that these factorials in the denominator coming from different colors of atoms on the left and the right hand side doesn't make a difference in the mathematics. And this gives us our final solution of 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 6 factorial, and this entire thing squared. Now this comes out to be 784 different arrangements or different microstates. And of course, the form of this formula will be the form that we'll be able to use for any scenario. We see, again, that we have this 8 factorial in the numerator, which is just the number of spots on each side of the divide, and this 2 here is just the number of atoms of different color on each side of the divide. 
and this 6 is just the total number of atoms of each color minus this 2. So we can use this formula now to apply to the rest of the cases. In the next scenario, we have even more mixture. Now, three atoms of different color on each side of our separating line. For instance, let's say that this atom and this atom again swap out. So we have one extra blue atom on the right and one extra green atom on the left. This means that we now have on the left five blue atoms and three green atoms. And then consequently on the right, the exact opposite. We have three blue atoms and five green atoms. And again, the question is, in how many ways can we arrange our 16 atoms such that this condition is fulfilled? As always, we separate our problem into two subproblems. First, we look at the number of ways we can do so on the left. And as before, think of this problem as having to choose positions for each of our atoms. For our three green atoms, we now know that we have eight positions for the first one, seven are left for the second one, and six are left for the third one. And we divide this by three factorial because swapping equal colored atoms doesn't change the arrangements and we don't want to count them. For the five blue atoms, we have five choices left for the first one because three spots are already taken by the green atoms, four for the next one, three for the next one, two and one. And we divide this number of choices by five factorial because swapping equal colored atoms doesn't change anything. Then of course we combine these, we multiply them together to get again our formula. 8 factorial, the number of spots, divided by 3 factorial, multiplied by 5 factorial. On the right we can do exactly the same, the only difference being that the colors are swapped. At this point we have 3 blue atoms, for which we have 8 times 7 times 6 divided by three factorial different options to distribute them over eight different positions. And for the five green atoms, we have five times four times three times two times one, divided by five factorial different choices. Combining them, we again get eight factorial, divided by three factorial, multiplied by five factorial. Then again, we combine left and right, to get our final solution of 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial multiplied by 5 factorial and we square this entire thing and this gives us a total of 3136 different microstates for this specific macrostate. And this brings us to the final case where we have four different colored atoms on each side of the divide. So let's say that these two atoms switch around. So we have one more green atom on the left hand side and one more blue atom on the right hand side. And this is actually the maximum level of mixture that we can achieve because we now have four blue atoms and four green atoms on the left hand side and four blue atoms and four green atoms on the right hand side. So our constraint becomes for a final time four blue atoms on the left and four green atoms on the left and thus on the right which is now identical four blue atoms and four green atoms and now imagine how hard this would be to count manually you might be running out of time doing so and you will definitely make a mistake instead of doing so we can write down the answer immediately by using the formula that we've now built up and have an intuitive feeling for where it comes from. We have 8 factorial in the enumerator, which is simply the number of possible spots on each side of the divide, and we divide this by the following. We have 4 factorial, which is the number of blue atoms on the left hand side, or now equally the number of green atoms on the right hand side, and we multiply this with 4 factorial, again the number of mixed atoms on each side of the divide. And to finish off, we just square this number because this number is the number of possible arrangements on each side of the divide. And we have two different groups, so we square them. And if we plug this in into a calculator, we find that we have 4,900 
different arrangements such that we have an equal amount of color on each side of the divide. And this is what's called the equilibrium state. And this is how you can obtain a table where for each macro state, you calculate the number of micro states. And this is exactly what I did in my other video. Now, how this relates to the arrow of time and how we experience time and even how it can reverse its steps, I gladly refer you to this video, of course. You can find the link down below. If you enjoyed this video, be free to give it a like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing. I thank you for watching. And if you made it this far, I am very proud of you. I will see you in the next one.